your Bibles, turn to the book of Luke in chapter number 15. Familiar scripture this morning. Very familiar scripture. You say, well, preacher, what is that? Anybody ever heard of the prodigal son? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I want to, I was, I know a lot of people have preached on the prodigal and they've taught on it. But I want to talk to you this morning about the prodigal son and uh, the prodigal son goes home. Prodigal son. I forgot to give my man in the sound room a title to this and where I'd be. It's Luke chapter 15. Chapter 15 and... I'll be starting with verse number 11. And this morning as we, when you find your place there, we'll stand together and be reading this this morning. And I want to talk to you about the prodigal son goes home, going home. And when we look at this, we, we think of this, uh, this young man, he has, he's left a lot. He's left, and you know, today, how much have we left behind? How much have we left that we could have had? And when we look back, we look back and we see, and uh, Peter told uh, was told over there in the scriptures. And I started to preach on that, to look at that today. He said, stir up their pure minds. Stir them up. Stir them up. And, uh, you know, as we think about it, we need to be stirred up. We need to be stirred up by what uh, uh, we have and what we could have according to the Word of God. And the Word of God is, is real. And uh, it, it tells us exactly what we can have today and what we need to have inside our soul, our body. But in chapter 15, in verse 11, let's look into the Scriptures. And the Bible said here, he said, And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto him his living. And not many days the, uh, after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with righteous living. And when he had spent all, there rose a mighty famine. He said, in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to, the, to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And he would faint, have he filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am hungry, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father, he said he saw him and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto his father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more, no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said unto his servants, 
bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. And now the elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard the music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what was these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and was would not come in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid that I, may, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy, li his, thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Thy son, now listen to this, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meant, it was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Oh, I'll tell you, don't it make your heart glad? Don't it make it, I mean, touch you down deep when somebody is, I mean, see, one day, one day you too, let me say this before you be seated and we go to the Lord in prayer. One day you were lost. One day you was at the Father's house. One day you left the Father's house. You left there. And God loved you so much that He set you free. He set you free to go wheresoever you wanted to go, to do whatever you wanted to do. You could go anywhere you want to go. And God said, Choose you this day whom you will serve. You, may, you have to make a choice. You have to make a choice. The choice is in your hands. Heavenly Father and Almighty God, as we look today in the Word of God, God help us to choose. Help us, Lord, to make a choice. God, I thank God that I made a choice one night. Lord, Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for you coming to this earth and paying a price you didn't know. Loving an unlovable soul but yet, Lord, you died in my place. Lord, I thank you for all you did and all you're doing. In Christ's name, amen. You may be seated. But I want to tell you a little story, and I've told it many times, about the little boy that had a sailboat. He had a sailboat, and he played with that little boat in the creek. He played with it many times, many times. But one day that little boat went down the creek. He went down that creek and he, he lost it. It sailed away. He lost it and he could not find it. To make a long story short, it went on and time passed and time passed. One day that little fellow was walking down the street and he seen that little boat in a pawn shop window. Beautiful little boat sitting there. And he walked in and he said, Sir, he said, that's my little boat. He said, sitting there, he said, I, I'd, I'd like to have it back. It sailed away one day. It got away from me. And he said, that's mine. He said, no, no, it's not yours anymore. It's mine. 
He said, but I'll sell it to you for a price. It has to be bought with a price. But he said, I made it. I made every little sail. I put every little string. I, ma I made that with my own hands. And I loved it and I fashioned it with love and care. I kept it close to me. I, I kept it with me. And I loved it so much. And with tender love, I watched over it. And one day, I, I put it in a stream. And I let it, I watched it float away. And that little boat was no more in my hands. But today, it's sitting here. And I want to buy it back. He said, you can have it but you've got to pay the price. And he said, I'll pay the price. I, whatever the price is, I'll pay it. And he said, he went out and he earned the money. And he come back and he said, I've got the price. I've got the price of that little boat. And he walked in. And he walked in and he picked it up. And he said, you're mine again. You're mine once more. You're mine. I loved you so much and I cared for you. And I held you. And I made you with love and I made you with understanding. And I made you out of purity. And I made you with care. But that day I set you free and you sailed away. But today I paid the price. And I bought you back and you're mine. You're mine once again. Once you were mine, but today you're twice mine. That's how much I love you. Isn't that what God done for you? Amen. Oh, dear God, that's what God done for you. Twice he loved you. Once he made you in the image of God. And God loved you so much that he set you free. But uh, you went to Calvary and God made a, uh, paid the price. God paid the price. Uh, and the day that you got saved, uh, he said, uh, once you were mine, I set you free. But today, uh, uh, I bought you back. Uh, I bought you. Uh, Fred, you're mine. Uh, you're mine again. Uh, uh, with care, I made you. Uh, with care. Uh, with care. Uh, with love and care. Uh, I made you in the image of, uh, of uh, God the Father, God the Son, uh, and God the Holy Ghost. Uh, and today you're mine once more. Uh, brother, that's the way it was with the prodigal. Uh, uh, brother, uh, what I'm saying to you today, uh, brother, uh, uh, the younger son said, uh, Father, I want what's mine. Uh, brother, I don't want uh, uh, the worldly things. Uh, I don't want the things of this world. Uh, brother, I don't want uh, uh, the what's mine of this world. Uh, I want the blessings of God. Uh, brother, I want uh, what God's got for me. Uh, I want the blessings of God. Uh, I want the mercy. I want the grace of God. I want the promise of eternal life. I want the power of the Holy Spirit. I want something, brother, that'll get into you and make you move and make you love one another and give you the power of God Almighty when you get on your face and get right with God and you call on him uh, brother you can feel something down deep in your soul uh, brother uh, but the thing about it was uh, here uh, old Satan uh, brother he came uh, and he said uh, he uh, told him uh, he said it's alright uh, it's alright uh, but you know sin uh, will take you farther then you want to go uh, and it'll keep you longer uh, than you want to stay. And it'll cost you a whole lot more than you want to pay. 
But the thing about it was, uh, this story relates uh, to a young man, uh, and he's leaving home, uh, and he's finally coming to his senses. And I told you, may have told you all this, but I want to ask you a question. How long did he stay out there? How long did the prodigal, a young preacher, ask me this? Uh, and I've never forgot it. Uh, Brother Tim, uh, many years ago, uh, he come to me uh, and he said, Preacher, uh, I want to know uh, somebody or someone uh, uh, sometime uh, may have asked him the question. Uh, he said, how long did the prodigal stay gone? How long was he gone from my father's house? And brother, I begin to dig. And I begin to look into the scriptures. Uh, and brother, I, I begin to uh, pray. Uh, and in uh, all of the 15th chapter, uh, I could not find. Uh, and brother, then it came to me. Uh, he, I'll tell you exactly uh, how long he was gone. Uh, exactly. Uh, he was gone uh, till he got tired of sin. Uh, when he got tired of sin, uh, then brother, he headed toward the Father. Brother, that's how long he was gone. But I want you to know, uh, brother, let's look. Uh, in chapter 15, uh, in verse number 17, uh, look, uh, he remembered his father's love. Uh, brother, uh, he said in verse 17, uh, and when he came uh, to himself, uh, brother, he said, now, uh, I don't know if any of you uh, ever talk to yourself. Uh, brother, it's all right uh, as long as you don't start answering. Uh, but brother, uh, brother, he he remembered his father's house. Uh, look what he said. Uh, he came to himself uh, and he said, How many servants uh, in my father's uh, have bread enough to spare? Uh, and I perish with hunger. Uh, he remembered the house uh, and he remembered uh, his father's heart. Uh, boy, I'll tell you. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, you mistreat somebody, uh, they'll remember it. Uh, and brother, you love of somebody uh, and they'll remember it too uh, but brother not only that uh, he remembered uh, the hope uh, he remembered uh, the salvation uh, he remembered the power uh, that his daddy had uh, that the father had uh, brother there was hope uh, there was a foundation uh, there in that home uh, and not only that uh, he repented uh, of his foolish living uh, Look what he said uh, from 17 down through verse 19. Uh, and he said in verse 18, uh, I will arise. Uh, brother, there's nothing going to change till you change. Uh, there's nothing going to be right uh, until you get right. Uh, brother, but he said, uh, I will change. Uh, brother, shameful living uh, will never pay off. Uh, it don't have no dividends. Uh, brother, but I I want to tell you right now, uh, if you want revival, uh, if you want the power of God in your life, uh, brother, uh, that you've got to realize uh, that the devil does not uh, hold the key to the bank. Uh, brother, uh, he does not hold the key uh, to, uh, to, I mean, to living right. Uh, but brother, what does he say? Uh, he said, I will arise uh, and what? Uh, not go uh, down to the club uh, or the, you know, uh, the house of God ain't a club. Uh, the house of God uh, just ain't uh, a meeting place. Uh, brother, uh, the house of God uh, is a house of prayer. Uh, it's a house uh, of God Almighty. Uh, brother, it's a place uh, that is holy. Uh, it's a place uh, where God lives. Uh, it's not a place where you come in uh, and you just sit down uh, and just ho hum uh, and you just sit there uh, like a knot on a log. Uh, hallelujah to God. Uh, brother, they ought to be something uh, that, that uh, jerk you up every once in a while uh, and say, Hallelujah! Well, praise the Lord! Uh, well, glory! Uh, hey, brother, uh, there ought to be something uh, that'll get in your uh, that skin of yours uh, and bring you up to praise the living God. 
brother, there ought to be something that's alive down in your soul. If they ain't something to praise God, God said, I'll let the rocks cry out. Brother, listen. I don't want Vulcan materials down yonder on 115 crying out for me. Brother, do you? I don't want that crowd down there hollering praise the Lord for me. Brother, I want to do my own praising. I want to do my own shouting for the glory of God. Hey, they didn't save me. Brother, God Almighty saved me. Uh, the Holy Ghost brought me down the aisle uh, and I uh, asked God to save uh, a little old boy that didn't have nothing. Uh, and God, uh, had, I asked Him to save me and that's exactly what He done. And this old prodigal said, I will arise. How long's it been? Listen to me. Since you've been up here, how long's it been? How long's it been? Well, they'll think I've done something wrong. Maybe God knows you have. Maybe God knows you need to, need to make a trip. Maybe God knows that God, you got something down in here that needs to come up here. Uh huh. He said, I will arise. But he didn't stop. But he said, I'll go to the Father. I'm going to the Father. I ain't going to the brother. I'm not going to the trustee. I'm not going to one of the preachers in the church. I'm not going to the pastor. But I'm coming to God. I'm coming to the Father. I'm going to the one, brother, that made me. I'm one. I'm going to the one that bought me. I'm going to the one that paid the price on Calvary. I'm going to the one that can get the job done. I'm going to the one that I've sinned against. I'm going to the one that can at the blood came down uh, it didn't pour down from Calvary uh, but brother it was shed uh, for every sin uh, for everyone in this world uh, he said come whosoever will uh, brother sister it don't make no difference who you are or what you've got uh, it don't make no difference what you've done uh, brother sister what you need is a trip to the father Amen. brother but he said he said, here, he said, I will arise and I will go to the Father. And he said, now listen to what he said. Verse 18, he said, for I have what? He, he didn't say, come up here. He, come, well, I have... Uh, I need to go up there and confess my faults. I've got to go up there. Preacher, would you pray with me? I need to bring my faults and my failures to the Lord. Amen. That ain't what the Word of God says. That ain't... That, now, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's read the Word of God. He come in here and he said, For Father... I have sinned. I've sinned against heaven and before thee. God, I've sinned against all of heaven, everything you've made. And God, I've sinned against you, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. God, I've sinned against every one of you. He didn't say nothing about faults, did he? He didn't say one thing about faults and failures. But he said, God, I've sinned. I've sinned. If it's not of God, it is sin. Amen. If it's not of God, it's sin. It's sin. 
sin. Well, I didn't steal but a quarter, and I saw him get five dollars. It's sin. Thou shalt not steal. It didn't say a quarter or five dollars, did it? Ask my wife what I've done. You perfect? Why, good God, no. There ain't no perfect person but the Lamb of God. Amen. I went and got a haircut. And I stuck that. He gave me a pencil to write down a phone number. And I told you about it. I stuck his pen in my pocket after he cut my hair. I got up that night, that evening, drove all the way back to the barber shop. And he's closed. I stuck that pen to him and beside his, beside his door next to his window. Next time I went down there, I told Brother William when he cut my hair, I said, William, did you get your pen back? I stuck it in my pocket. I stole your pen. And I asked God to forgive me. And God convicted me of that thing after I seen it in my pocket. And I brought it back. He said, Dean, there are a whole cup of them pens in there. You get as many of them as you want. He said, I got them for all my customers. I said, I didn't know that. He said, I give you that pen. I said, yeah, but you didn't tell me that. But I drove, all, I drove back down here to bring that pen back. That thing bothered me. That pen stood between me and my prayer to God. You know what? Your conscience will show you what's right or wrong. Amen. Patty, it'll, it'll get a hold of you, won't it? It'll stand there. That, that thing will stand between you and God. I went to pray, and there's a pen right there. There's a pen right there. And buddy, I got up and got rid of that pen. I got rid of that thing. I went back to the house and I could pray. See, God knows. God knows what to do and how to do it. And this prodigal, what was he doing? He, had a, he was tired of shameful living. His life was sinful living. His life was sorrowful living. And he said, I'm going all the way down. You go down to, and he said in verse number 19, he said, I'm no, wor no, no more worthy to be called a son, but make me one of the hired servants. No more worthy. He felt unworthy, sorrowful. He was ashamed. He come up here, you come up here, and you're tired. You're, 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 you're guilty. You don't come up here chewing, chawing gum. You don't come up here uh, eating on a piece of candy. You come up here and you, you're tired. You're tired of sin. You're, you're guilty before God, before all of heaven. And the thing about it is, you, you want to, God to forgive you of your shameful living and accept Him as, your, as a child of God. You want Him and to accept you and you accept Him as God Almighty and to forgive you of all of your sins. Amen. Brother, but what am I talking about? You look in verse 20 and 21. What's he saying here? He said here, he said, he said right here, he said, and he arose and came to the Father. He went to the Father and he came to his Father and when he was yet a great way off, here come the Father. Why? The Father knew what was in the heart. The Father knew uh, and the thing about it, he returned in rags, he returned in ruins and he came uh, and he thought in his mind he was a reproach uh, unto the Father. He was a reproach to his home. He was a reproach to everything around him. 
Why? Because he had done wrong. He knew his standing in his home. And he said, the son said unto the father, I have sinned. I ain't got faults and failures, but Father, I've sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no longer worthy to be called a son. God, I know what I ought to be and God, I know what I can be, but God, I'm no longer worthy. I'm no longer. I'm going to soon close. But the thing about it, you look. A couple more things, and I'm through. Verse 22 through 24. And he said, But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, the robe of righteousness. What he restored into the family, he restored the fellowship, and he restored the favor. Why? How did he do it? He restored the fellowship, but he couldn't restore it Till he confessed, I'm a sinner. Lord, I'm a sinner. He wanted to be. He was restored and he restored him. When he restored him to the family, he come in and he put him back into where he needed to be and into the family, into the fellowship of everybody and everybody listen. I don't care if you're a drunk. I don't care if you're a pill pusher. I don't care what you used to be. But bless God, when God forgives you, you've got no right to open your mouth. Brother, when God forgives you uh, and God wipes that sin away uh, and you come and join the church uh, and you're part of the church of God, the family of God, brother, God moves that as far as the east is from the west. And if you ever bring it up, God said it'd be better if you had a millstone put around your neck and cast into the depths of the sea. That's good preaching, Dean. Hey, man. Brother, I'll tell you right now, when you're in the family of God, brother, I ain't got no, no way, no how, nowhere to point a finger at nobody. Brother, when God saves you, He wipes it away. And when God saved me, God wiped it away. Boy, hallelujah to God. When God looks at me, Brother Tim, Brother, thank God he can't see my ungodly life because he has to look through the blood and the blood has washed my sins away. Glory, hallelujah to God. Thank God for the blood. Glory. Look down at verse number 32. And if they want to, they can get a song. Brother, uh, verse 32. I was meat. It was meat that we should make merry. We should make merry the Father talking. He rejoiced in the fellowship of the love. He said it was necessary. It was right for me. Oh, it was necessary that I do this. He said that I make that we should make merry and be glad for this. Thy brother uh, was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Uh, he renewed his hope. Uh, he rejoiced in his heart, uh, and he received him. Uh, in his home, uh, he received him back. Uh, brother, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I'm glad, thank God, that God loved me enough uh, to take me uh, as I was. I didn't have to work things out. I didn't have to do this or do that. All I had to do is ask him to save me, and that's exactly what God done. Glory! Oh, yeah. I didn't have to sit and beg and plead and all of this. It was by faith. By faith. God saved me. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. In this church as we stand. As we stand. 
Heavenly Father, and Almighty God, Lord, every heart in this room, oh God, let them walk down that prodigal's road. Lord, oh dear God, God, they're in a, in a pig pen. Lord God, they're out of the will of God. Oh God, if they've never been saved. Oh God, if they've left the Father's house. Oh God, wherever they're standing. And God, there's something in their mind right now. Lord, walk through their precious soul. God, walk through their mind right now. They're conscious. They're subconscious right now, Lord. God, take your holy finger and point in their soul. God, there's something that needs to be done right now. God, you just didn't put this on my mind for no reason at all. It's such a simple message. It's such a a message that everyone knows all about it. But no one really obeys or gets to the bottom of it. Lord, there's someone here today that really needs, really needs to take a walk to the Father's house. They need to see their life in the light of the Holy Spirit. Lord, today needs a day, Lord, that you're pointing. Oh, God, I'm not a prophet, neither the son of a prophet. But, God, today you're, you're pointing a finger at some soul that needs a touch. God, I pray that they'll obey the Holy Spirit of God. Amen.